Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Welcome back also to another video in my cheapest seat series. As you can tell by the thumbnail and the title and everything, I managed to bag one of the dirt cheap seats at Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. This was my third visit to see this show. Because I live in London, I'm very fortunate in that I can quite easily go and see this show in comparison to most people. And I know that sounds so braggy, I don't mean it to sound that way. But I feel like with this show, to be able to see it and not have to book like three years in advance, you do need to be very flexible if possible. Both of my previous visits to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child have been fully vlogged, so you can go and check those out on my channel. They'll be linked in the description below. The first visit, I was so lucky and I managed to get a front row seat of the stalls, but not by the Friday 40. And the second time I got seats um, that were the 20 pound seats on the side of the stalls with quite the restricted view. The 15 pound seats are generally in the balcony, so the top level of the theatre. This was my first time sitting in the balcony of the Palace Theatre. I've been to this theatre quite a few times, but I've only actually sat in the stalls, which is quite funny now that I think about it, because I saw um, Singing in the Rain here quite a few times, and I've been to a couple of concerts here. But as I say, mostly I've been in the stalls. So first of all, let's talk about how you can even try and get these tickets. It's hard, I'm not going to lie to you, but I like to check the website quite often. So just the legitimate Harry Potter Play website and I recommend that you only buy tickets from there because they are one of the first shows um, apart from like Book of Mormon and Miss Saigon, I know the off the top of my head, the ones that have tried to do this, that really are like, pushing to not have um, resold tickets or obviously fake tickets, ticket touts. They're really trying to eliminate that. And so you probably could find Harry Potter tickets somewhere else, but I personally would not trust them as much. So just go directly through the website. You know that if there are tickets there, they are legitimate. You're not gonna lose out on a lot of money. It's just stress to buy them anywhere else. I wouldn't recommend it. As I mentioned, I check the website often, just out of curiosity more than anything. You can go through either NIMAX or ATG. So there, it's a bit interesting that there's two ticket companies handling this. In my experience, I've had more luck going through the NIMAX website rather than the ATG, and honestly, I do not know why. I don't know if it's something to do with the speed in which they get the returned tickets back onto the website, or if it's um, held seats, like house seats, production seats, whatever you wanna call them. I don't know, but I've just, the times that I've managed to buy tickets, it's been through NIMAX. So obviously check both if you're really keen on trying to get tickets, but personally, NIMAX has been a win for me. With Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, it is quite annoying because you can never really pick specific seats that you want. So what I mean is obviously it's mostly sold out pretty much all of the time. It's technically sold out, but there are sometimes tickets available to grab. When I booked the 20 pound seats in the stalls, I was looking on the website and because I was doing it on my phone, it just wasn't, it wasn't happy because I, it just wasn't working. So I ran up to the box office. I was at work at the time. So I was able to just go straight from there to the theater and purchase them there, which was great. But if you don't have that luxury, obviously that's a bit harder. Therefore, I definitely recommend just trying to do it on your laptop, just because laptop or computer, or whatever, just because it's so much easier. Anyway, the point I was trying to make is that you can't really pick the specific seats that you want. So for example, if you wanted like an aisle seat or something, you probably won't have that luxury with this show because when tickets are available, it's not gonna be like the, the massive amount of tickets. It's gonna be a few here and there that have been returned. For this visit, I obviously went for the balcony seats. I went for the 15 pound seats, which is as cheap as it's going to get for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And obviously you've got to remember that when you're buying tickets for this show, it's going to be, Oh, London. You've got to remember when buying tickets for this show that it's not just one purchase of 15 or 20 or can't remember what the other price ranges are, 35, 45, whatever. It's double that obviously because you're paying for two parts. On my recent visit to uh, film this video, 
I actually only saw part one because as I mentioned, I have seen the show twice before in its entirety and I think I prefer part one anyway. So I was happy with just going for part one. This leads me on to another point. Now you can select if you want to buy your tickets as a pair, so for part one and two, or you can buy them separately, which is what I did. I feel like if you're okay with maybe seeing part one now and then part two just in the future when you have time or when you can try and find tickets again, you might heighten your chances of finding just tickets for part one. Again, this sounds really weird and I don't fully understand it myself, but there is that option on the website now. I swear at the start there wasn't, you could only buy them together, but they must think now that obviously it's been a little while, people want to just see either part one or part two, so I think they've like loosen things up a bit there. Obviously though, if you've never seen the show before, you're probably going to want to see both parts like in the same week, as close together as possible, and therefore you'll want to click the consecutive performances ticket buying option because then you'll get performances that are either like um, same day or one day and then the next day or as close together as possible. One thing I've not mentioned is obviously there is the Friday 40 every week. It's pretty self-explanatory. The lottery happens on Friday, it's online. I normally pay attention to their Twitter and just click the link through there, but you can obviously just go to the website and go to the Friday 40 bit and click book tickets that way and try and win the lottery. But your chances, I'm sorry to say, are gonna be very slim. The way the lottery works is obviously you enter it on the Friday and then if you manage to get tickets, it'll be for the next week's performances and obviously you pay 40 pounds, so 20 pounds per part and you'll be on the front row most of the time, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I've heard reports of Friday 40 seats being further away, but it's, it's always gonna be a good seat. Okay, I feel like I've covered the buying process. If not, then leave me any questions you have in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. I'm gonna show you the vlog footage now so you can get a look at what my view was like and you know, just my trip to the theatre. So I'll catch up with you later and we'll talk about the view and the seat and how everything was.
Alrighty, let's chat about this seat. First of all, it didn't seem too bad. It was quite a trek up to the balcony, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't too steep to get down. Obviously I was only on the second row, so I was nice and like close to the front of the balcony. However, this did have its pros and cons. Obviously, because you are so high up, there is gonna be a safety rail at the front. This did get in my way. <laughs> I feel like if you're maybe kind of row D and up, the safety rail won't be as much of an issue, but then obviously you are at a steeper angle to watch the show. I didn't feel like I was really, if you get what I mean. It wasn't like when I saw half a sixpence and sat in there very top level, that felt a lot steeper. So that was interesting to me to be in the top level of the theater and not feel like I was gonna fall over into the stalls. So the view overall wasn't bad. It was much better than when I sat in the 20 pound seats in the stalls, that's for sure, because there I had a pillar in front of me and I could barely see anything. And actually the balcony view offered me a great perspective of the show that I hadn't seen before. All the lighting on the floor and things like that, I just hadn't seen before because I wasn't at the vantage point to be able to see it. So I really enjoyed that about this view. The leg room, however, oh my goodness. I have never experienced pain at the theater like I did at the balcony for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. <laughs> I would say I'm a fairly kind of average height. I'm not sure exactly how tall I am. Probably maybe, I think five, six, five, seven, I guess. And I was struggling. The way the seats are laid out, it's kind of like your knees will fit into the, the groove. So like the seat, <laughs> this is gonna be a weird demonstration. The seats obviously curve and then my knees were like, in the curves where the seat next to it met. Does that even make sense? I don't know. But you know what I mean if if you know what I mean. However, this position for like an hour and then a break and then what, another hour or whatever was painful and I had to I had to get up. As soon as the interval started, I was like, I need to get out of this seat. I need to stretch my legs. And I ended up sitting in the bar where I could just actually stretch my legs out. Like my knees physically hurt when I got up. And there was a guy next to me who, he was even taller than me. So Lord knows how he was dealing with it because if I was in pain, he was in a lot of pain. <laughs> if you're a short person, you're gonna be fine. Like you're, you're gonna be quite comfortable actually. But for me, the leg room, I probably wouldn't sit in that seat again because of the leg room. Going back to the view and just the experience of that in general, as I mentioned, it wasn't a bad view whatsoever. It was obviously a very different angle to watch a show at. The stalls and the dress circle are obviously gonna be the prime views, but you just wanna be as central as possible. I think I actually envied the people that were like in the middle of the balcony because I thought, that's probably not a bad view to be fair. Unfortunately, I didn't get the chance to go to the middle of the balcony to check it out because I was just so in pain in the interval. <laughs> if you can snag up seats that are more central in the balcony, I feel like you're gonna have a way better view, but that's not to say that I had a bad view. As I mentioned, I was seeing so many different things that I wouldn't have seen from the stalls or the dress circle level, like the lighting and some of the magic that I could see not better, because obviously I was further away, but you know, I could watch it with a different perspective. Saying that about the magic, I don't feel like you miss out on anything at all from the top level. You can see pretty much everything, which is really good. You also get a very interesting experience at the end of part one, which obviously I'm not going to spoil because we keep the secrets here. If you've seen the show before and you know what I'm on about, then obviously you know, and it was, really cool. <laughs> I'm not really sure what else I want to say about these seats right now. I think I would definitely recommend these 15 pound seats in the balcony over the 20 pound seats at the very side of the stalls. And I think that says something that I'd rather sit in the cheaper ones that are higher up rather than the slightly more expensive ones that are in the ground floor. Because if you've seen my vlog from that second visit to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, you know that my view was 
trash. Like it was not good at all. So I'd rather be able to see more of the show, perhaps be a little bit uncomfortable, but actually be able to see what's going on. And as I've said, if you can try and get seats as central as possible, that is absolutely going to be your best bet. I would love to know if you've been to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child and where you've managed to sit in the theatre. Please do share your experiences with us in the comments because I feel like it will help a lot of people. It's a very stressful show to book for and you don't want to be panicking also about whether it's even a good seat to be in. So as I said, if you've seen it, leave your experiences just briefly down below and I would really love that. It would make me very happy. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's helped you in any way, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more of me in the future. I'd also love your suggestions on what shows to cover in the future in my cheapest seat series. That's really hard to say. Why didn't I think of a better name? Your feedback and your suggestions are very welcome. So please do leave them in the comments below. I hope you're all doing so well and I will see you very soon. Bye.